Grace, peace, and mercy from God our Father in Christ Jesus our Lord and Savior. There's a lot of really hard-hitting stuff. My sermon's based on Deuteronomy. Choose life is the invitation from our Old Testament reading. In Deuteronomy 30, 19, This day I call the heavens and the earth as witnesses against you that I have set before you life and death, blessing and curses. Now choose life so that you and your children may live. Boy, that's a... That's a uh, message that the world doesn't want to hear today. That's a message that gets twisted also. See what God has set before us. Understand the choices and the consequences. Don't be naive don't be unaware. Makes Luther, those words make Lutherans really nervous, doesn't it? I noticed Steve sat further back. <laughs> but you know, sometimes we're afraid of that. We're saved by grace through our faith. What does the law have to do with it? Well, the law does not get abolished. Well, I'm gonna, we're going to sin, right? Sin's not good. We're commanded to obey the law. Moses sums up the contents of the whole of his preaching in the law in these words. Life and good and death and evil, as he already is already done. He already did said that in Deuteronomy 11 in the first part of his address. He lay the people by a solemn request under an obligation to be faithful. So he laid this out. Be faithful to the Lord. And through this obligation to conclude a covenant refreshed. He had set before them this day life and good. Prosperity and salvation. As well as death and evil. Adversity and destruction. By commanding them to love the Lord and walk in his ways. I was listening to uh, a program on Fox News this morning. It wasn't, wasn't about politics. Fox News is all, not all about politics. They actually get into religion in the morning and the Lutheran hour is on Sunday morning at 8.30. But a lot of times you want to blame God. What kind of God would destroy? What kind of God would do this and do that? Well, we made a choice. And God has laid a, a choice before us. And today, do we want life or death? Adam and Eve had that choice. And they choose death. Or chose death. Today, a lot of times we choose death. After all, what is the law for? It can show us our sin, can keep us out of trouble. How many of you have been in Florida for more than a year? Okay. Break into someone's house and see what happens in the state of Florida. 
I, I heard it a couple times. You're, if you steal from your neighbor, it's not going to end well. So thus, God is protecting us. Yeah, there's some states no one's going to do anything. But down here, good luck. We are to obey the law. You know, there, there's many choices in this world. Um, what are some of the choices you made this morning? Come to church. Am I going to come to church? Is that what you said? Yeah. Okay. What clothes am I going to wear? Where am I going to park? Or do you park in the same spot every time? What pew am I going to sit in? <laughs> Everybody sits in the same pew normally. <laughs> Lots of different choices. What shoes will I wear? I mean, for us guys, it's a little bit easier. But are you going to die if you choose the wrong shoes? Now, some people might say they're going to die, but... <laughs> Are you really going to die if you wear the wrong dress or the wear the wrong slacks or wear the wrong shirt? But if we choose wrong, yeah, that could result in death. And you're, you're probably thinking, well, pastor, that sounds like a lot of law. Whatever happened to our being saved by grace through our faith? What's with that? How do, I, how do I deal with that? Because I struggle with the law. And yes, can anybody be saved by the law? No. Must we keep the law? Right. The answer is yes. Okay, now let's kind of get into it. In Romans 6, do not let sin reign in your mortal body so that you obey its evil desires. Do not offer the parts of your body to sin as instruments of wickedness, but rather offer yourselves to God as those who have been brought from death to life and have been set free from sin and have become slaves to righteousness. The law has blessings as does the gospel. We talked a little bit about them. The law will guard our lives from harm, reveals what is pleasing to the Father. The blessings of the gospel saves eternally through Christ and does all things well for us. While no one can find salvation in the law, there is blessings, protection, even prosperity according to its keeping. The Father in heaven blesses us prosperously in his Son. When you're looking at this text and the, the uh, psalm we're going to talk about in the Bible study after church, it kind of goes on in the same way. Sorry. I'm going to start... requires uh, understanding that the gospel motivates us, motivates our obedience to the law. I mean, you fathers and mothers, why did you give your children rules? To punish them? Well, I had to follow rules when I was little, so you're going to have to follow rules. Why'd you tell them not to run with scissors? That's when I remember my mother. What can happen if you run with scissors? You cut yourself. You can end up stabbing yourself or your brother. I've got all brothers. But you want them to grow up to good and productive people. Same way with God. He doesn't want harm to come to us. 
He's not trying to punish us. But when we hear that gospel, that that's salvation that's been accomplished, yes, even for the murderer, even for the worst of the worst of the worst, it motivates us into obedience of the law. Do we do it perfectly? No. Will we? Eventually, yes. When Jesus comes back. When he comes back, all will be complete. But now we come before him. And when we hear that law that convicts us of what we haven't done or what we have left undone, We come before his presence and we ask for his forgiveness and he forgives us as far as the east and the west and all is done. He remembers no more. Now, what's the worst thing you did when you were little? Who's brave? (laughs) Imagine something that you didn't think your parents could forgive you. I remember once I busted a the picture window. It was actually the parsonage. <laughs> it had a, uh, uh, what do you call them, storm window. Hit it with a wiffle ball. I didn't want to tell anybody. But my dad heard it, and man, he came running out. <laughs> so what I do? I ran. <laughs> Probably would have been much better if I would have just admitted it. Probably would have Still had to pay a price. But who paid the price for us? For the windows in our lives that we have broken. We choose well that life may abound in, through, and around us. That we could richly prosper in Christ Jesus. May he, in his spirit, bless us this day. The Father has given us life and laid it before you. The Son has redeemed it and breathed new life into the world. It's where we come in. The world's messed up. It seems like it's getting worse. What are we doing to show the love of Christ to others? I know sometimes it's hard. Sometimes it's tough. But he said he will never leave us nor forsake us. The Spirit has chosen you for his own and filled you with good works. They're not our work. That's the best part about it. They're not our works. They're his. That Christian life might extend to others. Even those we we would have written off. But he has not written anybody off. Because he died for all. Choose well. Choose life. Who in here chooses life? You notice I'm kind of looking down? (laughs) I'm not a hand raiser, so I, I, you know, don't ask me why I do it up here. (laughs) But we all choose life. We all choose Jesus. And because of that, we live. And because of him living in us, more and more we can obey his law. We can follow his law because of he who lives in us. That is Christ Jesus. Amen. I'm going to have the, the kids come up. And you probably got the idea that something different's going to happen today. <laughs> so you're right. How are you guys doing? Good. Good? So we're going to get you a mic. Okay, we're going to do it right from here because I'm going to do it.
Which are you doing Isaiah? Uh, no, I'm doing Isaiah. I'm gonna have you do Isaiah first. Okay. I'm gonna have you do Isaiah. There's a reason. I'm gonna have you face this way. In Hebrews. Okay. Okay. I'm gonna have you start. You can you can look at it by if you want. To whom has believed our message, and to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? He grew up before him like a tender suit and like a root out of dry ground. He had no beauty or majesty to attract us to him, nothing in his appearance that we should desire him. He was despised and rejected by mankind, a man of suffering and familiar with pain. Surely he took up our pain and bore our suffering, yet we considered him punished by God, stricken by him, and afflicted. But he was pierced for our transgressions, he was crushed for our iniquities, and the court and the punishment that brought us peace was on him. We all like sheep have gone astray. Each of us has turned our own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. Isaiah 53, 1 through 6. Okay, you can have her. Or the two of you. Yeah. Oh, Phil, Philippians 2, 4 through 11. Look not every man on his own things, but every man also unto the things of others. Let this mind be in you, which is also in Christ Jesus, who, being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, and took upon him the form of a servant, and was made in the likeness of men. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself, and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Wherefore God also hath highly exalted him, and given him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, of things in heaven, and things in earth, and things under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is the Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Philippians 2, 4 through 11. By faith, Noah, being born of God of things not yet seen, moved with fear, prepared an ark of the saving of his house, which he could down the world and became a heir of the righteousness, which is, which is by faith. Okay, I'm going to have you guys just, if you can take a seat, I'm going to sit right down here. Oh. I know you guys were busy last week. So if you look, how can we, like, am I, did I shut mine up? No, I'm on. Okay. You know, we talk about the law, right? We talk about the law. In the law, should we should serve our neighbors. How can we do that? How is that possible? Do you like your neighbor? Okay. Okay. Now think about this. What did Jesus do? You guys just read it. Yeah. What does that mean to you? Yeah. How great is that? Do you like everything that's going on in the world? You do? People dying in Ukraine? <laughs> very bad sorry <laughs> very bad you know there's bad things that happen people that get cancer um, there's some good things that happen on earth there's some good things that we do but if you look at the cross kind of look up and down and kind of take your hand because you'll probably kind of notice you'll, you'll see me do this or you'll see me do this our relationship with God, up and down. And then a cross, what do you think that is? It, it's kind of a symbolism, it's not, you know, but it's our relationship with each other. If our relationship with God is good, our relationship with each other, so much better. Can, can we love people that aren't lovable by ourselves? Mean people? No. People that don't like you? No, no that's, that's hard. People that like us are pretty easy, right? You know, it's easy to like somebody that likes you. But it's not easy to like someone that's kind of, eh, you know, that doesn't really like you. 
You know what I mean? But we should love our enemies. So our relationship with God helps us love all those others. And then they see Jesus in us. Okay? And I better stop because otherwise we'll have another service. We won't get out of here until like 1 o'clock. <laughs> Would that be good? <laughs> I'm going to have you take.